Welcome to Power to the Artists, the evolution of 2D game tools. I'm Russ Scammell, the Technical Product Manager for 2D at Unity Technologies. Today we're going to start with an overview of our 2D roadmap. Next, we'll look at some outcomes that a lot of 2D projects are interested in, and we'll see how our new features come together to make these outcomes more achievable. Let's briefly recap what 2D tools are currently released in five areas. Foundational features, world building, animation, graphics, and physics. In foundational features, we have sprites. We also have a sprite atlas to combine sprites into a single sheet. We use sorting groups to control which renderers get rendered together and axis distance sort to sort your sprite renderers by distance along an axis. And our new PSD importer to import Photoshop files while maintaining layer information. This is very useful when importing multi-layered characters in preparation for rigging. For world building, laying out 2D can be as simple as using loose sprites or nine sliced sprites. But for more powerful grid-based layouts, we have tile map in rectangular, hexagonal, and isometric grid flavors. Now these can be supercharged with scriptable tiles and brushes. A recent release is Sprite Shape, our solution for more organic levels. In the area of animation, we have our sprite rigging toolset. This includes a skinning module for adding and editing bones, as well as generating and refining geometry and weights, and a sprite skin component that binds this all together in the scene. As for graphics, of course you can render sprites with sprite renderers. Sprite Mask gives you control over which parts of your sprite to reveal or hide, and more recently, Pixel Perfect Camera ensures your pixel art projects render accurately. This also works with Cinemachine via the Pixel Perfect Camera extension. And of course, physics. With 2D physics, we provide a rigid body based physics system for 2D. This comes with colliders, a composite collider that combines other colliders for better performance and a large collection of 2D joints and effectors. Let's take a look at what features are currently in pre-release for you to try out. In foundational features, we've also updated the hub template for new 2D projects. This now includes all verified 2D packages, and because they are pre-compiled, it also loads much faster than installing all the packages manually. Check this out in Unity 2020.1. An experimental Sprite Atlas version 2 uses an importer workflow that supports cache server and other asset database v2 features. Sprite Shape has a new stretched corner option that doesn't require a corner sprite to be defined, and 2D Animation has two experimental features to support sprite swapping in the form of a sprite library and a sprite resolver. There are lots of exciting developments in 2D graphics, and these are focused around the new 2D renderer in the Universal Render Pipeline. These include 2D lights, 2D shadows, and Shadergraph masternodes for lit as well as unlit sprites. And in physics, there are improvements to rigid body 2D XY position constraint, which makes a rigid body completely solid under any force and has almost zero runtime cost. We have per frame auto simulation, which enables physics to refresh at the same rate as the rendering cycle, providing smoother physics and visuals. Finally, the Edge Collider 2D now lets you control the start and end points to allow edges that overlap other colliders to maintain a continuous surface. Over the next few cycles, the focus for 2D is to continue to maintain stability of the feature set and to improve performance and workflows. Okay, let's switch gears and look at how the 2D features can be used to address some outcomes in 2D games. We will be doing this using assets from The Lost Crypt. The Lost Crypt was created by Back to the Game of Montreal, alongside the 2D and Evangelism teams in Unity. 
The goal was to see the tools used together and to raise the quality bar for 2D games in Unity. This production resulted in many 2D outcomes being addressed that are important to those of you developing 2D games. Let's spend some time looking at how the new 2D features work together to enable three of these, namely an organic 2D world, a bone-based character, and natural lighting in 2D. We are going to explore the aspects that were important to the creation of an organic 2D world. These include organic terrain, dappled light, and dust and pollen that moves in the wind. To achieve this, we're working with the following features. Sorting groups, sorting layers, sprite shape, 2D lights, and particles. As we look at the scene, the first thing to realize is that it's made of multiple layers. We control the sorting order of all these layers with sorting layers and sorting groups. The terrain is made of multiple sprite shapes. Sprite Shape is a flexible and powerful world building tool that features sprites tiling along a shape's outline that automatically deforms and swaps sprites based on the angle of the outline. Sprite shapes work well with the 2D polygon and edge colliders, and the collision shape adapts to the spline when it is edited, so designers don't have to do the additional work of getting the collision to match the visuals. The sprite shape here uses a couple of tricks from the sprite shape extras, which is included with the package. These rocks are attached to nodes on the sprite shape, so when you edit the shape, they remain grounded on it. And these flowers are also a sprite shape. They use a conformer script so that we can just edit the shape of the grass and the flower sprite shape conforms to it. The new 2D lights work with particles and these are used here to add dust and pollen motes in the sunshine. Now the result of all of this is an organic level that is easy to iterate on. Multiple layers of visuals that can be edited together and collision shapes that adapt to those visuals. Bone-based 2D characters are a powerful alternative to sprite sequences. A single sprite or a small set of sprites can be assembled together to make a character. Animation data is then decoupled from graphics to save on build size and to improve production flexibility. Some things we care about here are the sprite rigging workflow, and physics controlled joints. To achieve this, we are working with the following features 2D animation, 2D PSD importer, 2D physics, and rigid body 2D along with the 2D colliders and 2D joints. We start in Photoshop, where an artist has created a character made of multiple layers. We can see the different parts of the character are on separate layers. There may also be hidden layers in the file where reference images or construction history might reside. We'll export this character as a PSB so that it can be imported into Unity. Once we're in Unity, we simply drag the PSB file into the project. This is where the PSD importer takes over. Now we've imported the character with a mosaic and character rig option. This gives us an automatic sprite sheet and a hierarchy of sprite renderers in preparation for rigging. When we open this in the sprite editor window, we can switch to the skinning module to generate geometry, add bones and paint weights. Here we have a character where we've already generated the geometry and added the bones as well as painted the weights. While we worked, we were able to preview along the way. And when we're done, we simply hit apply. We drag the character into the scene for posing and animation. We can see here that a sprite skin has been automatically added to each sprite to drive the influence of the associated bones that we defined in the skinning editor. The long ponytail is controlled by a series of hinge joints 2D that inherit the motion of the character. 
These joints use angle limits between negative 5 and 5 to make sure that there isn't too much self-intersection and that the simulation stays nice and stable. Now the result of all of this is multiple animation clips created from one piece of art. A multi-layered character with depth, a mixture of keyframed motion and physically simulated motion, and a production process that supports rapid iteration, especially when compared to producing animated sprite sequences. Let's look at natural lighting in 2D. The major aspect that we want to look at here is achieving natural lighting, and then changing that lighting for different times of day, with scripts and gradients. To achieve this, we are working with the following features. The new 2D lights, which includes global lights, point lights, sprite lights, and freeform lights. All the 2D renderers in Unity respond to 2D lights. That includes sprite renderers, tile map renderers, as well as sprite shape renderers. In this scene, the global light is used as a base layer. 2D point and spotlights are being used to simulate light that is coming from a single point. Freeform lights are adding broad strokes of light in the trees and grass. And 2D sprite lights, which use sprites as light cookies, are adding dappled light simulating light that has passed through a leafy canopy. Okay, let's look at the light color controller here. Now this has a slider that goes from 0 to 1, and it defines an interface. And some of the children of this game object have scripts that implement this interface. When the slider value is changed, we iterate through all the children that have scripts that implement this interface, and we set either their material colors or the light colors of their children. This can also be used to drive transparency values as well, so some objects can appear or disappear as needed. For example, the stars and the night spirits that we see in this scene. The result of all of this is we can reuse a set of graphics by adding mood and depth in different lighting conditions. And we can change all of this dynamically, so we can preview it easily in the editor. Now let's talk about where you can get your hands on all of these features and samples. For all of the 2D packages, as well as the Universal Render Pipeline and Cinemachine, you can get these from Package Manager. From 2020.1 onwards, the new 2D template will include all the verified 2D packages, so you won't even have to do anything. We recently re-released our physics samples project on GitHub, and you can get it at this link. And the Lost Crypt sample project is available on the Unity Asset Store. We are making these tools and features to power your 2D games and experiences, so of course we want to stay in touch. Please drop by the 2D forums at this link, the 2D team at Unity wants to hear about your projects and your teams. Please share your workflows with us. Tell us what works, what doesn't, and what we might have missed. And most important of all, keep making amazing 2D experiences in Unity. Thank you.